Hey guys, this is our official part two of how we afford to travel. This is going to be going over all of our tips and tricks of how we save money on the road. Part one was all about how we make money on the road. So I'll link that video in the description if you're interested in that after watching this. So with that said, we're gonna spill the beans on what we use to save money on the road. Let's dive in. All right, so we're not gonna cover every single category. We're only gonna cover those categories that are very specific to RV life and where people see their budgets go right out the window. And we're gonna provide tips that you can implement. So let's start off with one of the biggest increases you'll see when you hit the road, and that is fuel. Recently, we just joined the TSD Fuel Savings Program, which has saved us so much money already, and we have only had it for a couple of months. This fuel program allows you to get trucker discounts at the pump uh, that TSD Logistics has negotiated with the different companies. It's amazing. Right now it's diesel only, but it allows you to use your corporate trucker card uh, right at the pump at uh, all of the, the diesel truck stands and you get, right now we're getting like $1.50 off a gallon, which is crazy. Even just on our trip from Florida to California, we saved about half the price in fuel as we did when we were going from California to Florida. So it, it it's amazing uh, savings, but it's only diesel. So if you don't have diesel, uh, we recommend checking out Gas Buddy. It's a great app that is free and allows you to find the cheapest gas and diesel stations in your area. It's what we used before we had TSD. Uh, and we still use it now if we're just out and about in the truck and we're not near any truck stops. The final thing that we use to save money on fuel is the Good Sam's Club. Uh, before TSD, if we were towing with the trailer, we would stop by Flying J or Pilot because we would get eight cents off a gallon with our Good Sam's Club card. Overall, all of the savings adds up, whether it's five cents off or a dollar fifty off a gallon, we'll take it. The next category we're gonna be going over is food. So if you don't have a handle on this, trust me when I say this category can definitely get out of hand, especially when you first start RVing. It really is just so fun to travel and try the local restaurants and breweries. So again, it can get really out of hand. So these are just our tips and tricks that we've learned to keep this spending under control. The first one and most obvious is just cook from home. I know that doesn't sound that fun, but if you have specific nights that you set out to go and eat and you know you'll be cooking from home the rest of the nights, it's just a great way to stay inside your budget. We like to do meal planning so that way we know exactly what we're planning for the week. We can stay within our grocery budget and then still have money that we've set aside that we call fun money and that is you for restaurants and breweries and stuff like that. So if you just set your budget early and you know that you can't exceed that, this is a great way to just keep it all under control. When we do grocery shop, we like to buy in bulk. Costco has become our new favorite program on the road. We did have Costco before and we liked shopping there occasionally, but I'd have to say we really honed our skills at Costco's because now we know exactly what we want. We have the meals that we like. As I said, we meal plan. So it's really easy to just get through Costco. We know they're gonna have what we want because they're pretty similar and they're located all over the United States. So it's a great chain to just get familiar with. We also like to pack our lunches. So we used to try and hunt down food on moving days with the RV, which in itself is just a stressful situation. But then we'd find ourselves obviously not knowing the area. So we didn't know 
what had food, what didn't have food, and what kind of restaurants would be available to us. So we started packing lunches and obviously it saved us money because we weren't eating out and it took away a lot of stress on moving days. So we highly recommend packing a lunch on moving days but also on your exploration days. We invested in a really nice cooler and that's what we like to take with us when we go exploring in national parks. That way we can hike or do whatever we wanted to do that day and still have a nice cold lunch, typically a sandwich, <laughs> ready for us when we get back to the truck. Packing your lunch is a great way to save money and then you're also not spending money on food that isn't worth it. We do like to spend our money on restaurants that are highly recommended or you know have the local town flavor and just know that when we're spending money on food it's on good food. Obviously when you're exploring a national park the cafe isn't where we'd want to be spending our money so that's why we pack lunches and you should too. And lastly when we do go out to eat we like to take advantage of happy hours. It's a great way to still get a taste for the local flavor or the local brews and still save a buck. So we really enjoy happy hours because some of the deals are awesome. You'll get two for one or 50% off. So always check out your local happy hour. You can normally just go online to any restaurant's website and they'll have a calendar showing their happy hours or they'll show their specials. So don't hesitate to take the extra effort to take advantage of happy hours and specials. The next area of savings that we want to talk about is campground fees. And so this is one of those things that you don't really know how to price out when you first get on the road because you've probably never stayed in campgrounds across the US and so you don't really know how much it costs. For us though, we save money on our nightly rate by purchasing campground memberships or RV clubs. And the number one that we use is Thousand Trails. Uh, so far this year, we paid our $850 annual maintenance fee for Thousand Trails and its add-on, which is called Trails Collection, which gets us access to over 120 RV parks across the nation. It's the beginning of May and we've already stayed in one for 35 nights, although I feel like we actually stayed in one in Florida that I'm not adding in all of those nights as well. So we've stayed in probably over 40 nights so far this year. And that brings our nightly rate down to, I think, below 25 off the top of my head. So right off the bat, that's a, that's a huge, huge savings, below $25 a night, just with 1,000 Trails membership. Um, and it will continue to go down as we stay in more Thousand Trails campgrounds. The next membership that we have is Passport America, which can get you up to 50% off. Uh, the little caveat with that one is the campgrounds get to choose uh, when they apply what discount, so it takes a little bit more effort to, to find those 50% off deals and when you can use them, but they are great when you do. Another membership that we take big advantage of is Harvest Hosts. It's great for those longer moving days for us when we're just passing through an area and we don't wanna stay in a Walmart parking lot. Uh, we just recently stayed at a gator farm and it was amazing. Uh, we were able to take a swamp boat tour out, which we've been talking about doing the whole time we were in Florida but uh, it just wasn't ever really convenient for us uh, until we stayed on a farm where they had a whole bunch of them. So that's always a fun, unique experience. And then we have uh, Good Sam's Club, which is a larger overall campground membership. It only gets you about 10% off your nightly rate, but we like to think of it as like a AAA type of membership where it doesn't give you a lot off, but it is accepted in a lot more places. So we have that membership and it's always just, just in case we ask like, hey, do you take Good Sand Club? Just like you would always ask, like, do you take AAA? Trying to get just that small discount because every dollar counts. Lastly, we use RV Trip Wizard, which allows us to sort and filter by all of these campground memberships that we have. 
So when we're doing our RV planning, we start off by just showing us campgrounds that we have memberships, uh, including Thousand Trails and the other ones that we save the most money. And we slowly add in additional campground memberships and clubs that we have so more campgrounds appear and it makes it really easy for us to quickly identify campgrounds close to where we want to be uh, with our memberships and how much money we can save so campgrounds are a huge topic we have even more clubs that we're a part of and save money on campground fees and for that reason we actually created a free rv club email course that goes over seven different clubs uh, and it's completely free it goes really in depth into them and talks about one whole club a day and who it's right for and what you can use it for and all the discounts you can get uh, so we'll put a link down in the description below where you can sign up for that free rv club email course and let's talk about the last area that we save money and the last way we like to save money is through experiences. Our attitude is why are you RVing if you're not having experiences? So while this is the topic that we will occasionally splurge in if it's something huge that we just really want to do and we can't do it anywhere else, we'll splurge and we'll do it. But well, we'll still look for a discount. We will. But if we can't find it, this is the category where we go, why are we doing this if it's not to have experiences like this. But with that said, we do like to save money as well. So when we go on the hunt for experiences, we always see if the website, for whatever it is, offers a coupon directly. Sometimes if you just mention, hey, I found a 10% off coupon on your website, they'll just give you a discount. So don't forget to look at company websites when you are booking your excursion, especially true when it's just a recommendation from someone else or a pamphlet from the campground. You can find a couple hidden discounts on the website. We also love Groupon. You can type in whatever city you're in, literally whatever activity you're into, or you don't even have to put an activity, you can just put in the city and see what coupons are there. So this is a great way to find deals on restaurants, so it's another way to save on food, but it's a great way to find what is fun and exciting and popular for the area. And you will find reputable companies on there. It's not just a willy-nilly discount program. There are highly rated companies offering up to 50% off on their excursions. So we highly recommend Groupon. Another thing we like to check is uh, GoCard or CityPass. And so what these are are little discount programs where in certain cities they've set up a program where you purchase their card for a set price, say like $200 up front, and you'll get to go to any of the excursions they've partnered with for free. So Los Angeles, Las Vegas, um, Atlanta, a couple of like mostly larger cities have these programs. We've personally used it in Oahu when we went to Hawaii a long time ago. And it's just a really great program and it saves you so much money. If you are definitely the person who wants to go out and see all of the to do things in a city, these will save you so much money. But of course you have to plan your days because these are kind of like our, our Disneyland day. You plan it all ahead so you make sure you get your money's worth. So it'll be something, it varies based on the city, but it can be between you know $50 and $300 for the card. And then they'll grant you access to multiple places. So in Los Angeles, I think it's around $300 for a card for three days and it gets you access to Universal Studios, uh, the amusement park, it gets you access to the Warner Brothers Studio Tour, Legoland, SeaWorld, Ripley's Believe It or Not, like a whole bunch of like those, the big tourist destinations. And you can go in and out unlimited admittance to those while your card is active. So those are great programs to check out if you are 
going to go to all the tourist places. The next way that we have saved money is by buying a National Park Pass. This might seem obvious, but we have seen some RVers out there who pay the entrance fee for every single national park they visit. And if you buy the National Park Pass, which is only $80, you get entrance into all of our national parks. So I believe Yosemite has a $35 entrance fee when if you're going to be going to multiple national parks, you absolutely need to have the National Park Pass. It's a no-brainer. The last way that we like to save money is by going to festivals and events and museums. And so we like to eat, save money going to those. So we look for free events and we use Facebook uh, Local as a great way to find free events that are taking place in the city that we're in, or we look for uh, local newspapers will also sometimes list all of the events in a city. So those are a great way to spend your time seeing what's special about the, the local area. Yes. So those are all of our tips and tricks. We hope that you enjoyed them. We love learning from you as well. So share your tips and tricks in the comments for how you have learned to save money on the road. We would really appreciate it. Other than that, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to join our getaway gang. We'll see Bye. you next time. Bye guys. <laughs> Bye guys. I'm getting those off. That's all right. I think that's fine, right? I don't know how that? I messed that up. It's really hot in here. I think I that's... I know, we're all... You guys don't know what we go through for you. <laughs> I know. You turn the AC off when we're filming so it's not loud. I thought I felt sweat dripping in the last one. That goes over uh, eight different clubs. Nine? Seven. 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 Hey, guys. I'm just kidding. You're going, right? Mm-hmm. Was that a shock? Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> right on her nose. Action! <laughs> oh. <laughs> you okay? Colin, butt on that. <laughs> Alright. Is that what you haul? Butt? Yeah. I got a, a load of butt here. <laughs> What's wrong with you? And if you don't get this under control, trust us. It can, damn it. Uh, it's red, one minute red. Is it running out of space? SD card, yeah.